I'd like us to do something together. I want you to close your eyes and think about continental Africa. What are the pictures that come to mind? And you don't have to share it with anyone. Now you can open your eyes. <laughs> Does it have something to do with this? Pictures of animals in the safari. Or this. An image of children who are hungry, diseased, and living in extreme poverty. Or perhaps did you think of this? Children in a classroom getting education and interacting with technology. Or did you think of this? A beautiful vacation destination. You see, all these images are from Africa. And if the only images that came to your mind were the first two, that's all right. It's most likely as a result of Western media's representation of Africa. You see, Africa is not a monolithic. Africa is diverse in its culture, language, religious beliefs, political systems, and races. And all of these diversity ultimately impacts the ways African people engage with technology platforms. And so today, I will be talking about a new theory called the African Technocultural Feminist Theory. This theory considers Africa's diverse cultures and the ways it influences how African people use technology for multiple purposes. It is also rooted in feminist theory as it centers underrepresented and minoritized identities within African culture. I've been in the United States since 2015. And before I came to the US, I loved to watch American movies. <laughs> Some of my favorite movies are Sister Act, anyone? Yes! I love the singing. I love The Father of the Bride. Has anyone seen it? I thought it was hilarious. I loved to watch The Matrix. Neo is super cool to me, till now. You see, watching American movies shaped my perception of American culture. I'm currently here with my husband and my two girls. I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. <laughs> and something that we, <laughs> some challenges that we have as we navigate between balancing Nigerian culture and American culture in my household, and this is so funny, is getting my children to choose Nigerian food over American food. Let me give you an example. I make jollof rice. Has anyone tried jollof rice? Yes! Takes significant time and effort to prepare, right? And then my kids would rather have a burger. <laughs> but dinner, very frustrating. You see, for the seven years that I've been in the US, I observed that a lot of the rich African diversity that I experienced in Nigeria was not reflected in American media. Let me contextualize that a little bit. Africa has 54 countries and over 2,000 languages. And all of these languages have their cultures and traditions that are distinct from each other. So I'm Nigerian, and Nigeria has over 500 different languages. I speak one of those languages. I speak Igbo. And when I say I'm Igbo, what that means to me is living in a multi-generational household, living with grandparents, aunties, uncles, together, laughing, being loud, sometimes eating from the same pot, dragging for that last meat. What it means to be, for me, what it means to be Igbo is at the end of the year, those of us that lived in the city would go to the village to go spend Christmas and New Year's with 
a family that lived in the village. We would go to the stream, go swimming, we would go to the farm, we would attend community events. It was amazing. The pictures on that slide was my Igbo traditional wedding, where we celebrated Igbo culture. And so coming back to Western media, I realized that a lot of the representation of African people within Western media was predominantly hunger, disease, and extreme poverty. And this can be troubling for two reasons. First, folks who have not had the opportunity to travel to Africa would typically have a disconnect from reality of what it means to live in continental Africa. And secondly, it leads to a homogenization of an entire continent into this one throat, which ultimately leads to negative stereotypes. I'm currently working on my dissertation, and my research focuses on the ways Nigerian women use new media technology for branding and marketing. I chose to study Nigerian women, or if you would like, African women, because according to African Diversity Center, while Africa's gender population, half of it is women, so 50% of Africa, African population are women, only 5% of women are represented as CEOs, and only 25% of women are working in the parliament, and only 29% of women actually make it up managerial levels. I also got curious about new media technology because I realized that a lot of Africans are beginning to rely on social media platforms to tell balanced stories of Africa and African people. For example, Low Carb Africa uses her social media platform to share healthy and nutritious food that is rooted in African culture. Unquo Official uses her Instagram to share zero waste and eco-friendly fashion designs. I Am Hamamat uses her Instagram to share beauty and hair care secrets that are rooted in, that are made from shea butter and are rooted in African culture. And Discover in Kenya uses her Instagram account to share beautiful and exciting places to visit on the continent. African people are also using social media platforms to advocate against injustices on their, popular, on their citizens. So for example, hashtag NSARS and Zimbabweans Life Matter was used by Nigerians and Zimbabweans to advocate against police brutality on their citizens. Hashtag Congo is bleeding was used to advocate against the exploitation of Congo mines. And Shut It, Do Shut it All Down Namibia was used to advocate against gender-based violence on Namibian women. And so as I started to think about um, my research and, how, and the ways Nigerian women are using new media technology, I relied on three theories to guide this understanding. I relied on self-presentation theory, technology affordance theory, and African feminist theories. And so, on one of the days I was meeting my advisor, Dr. Arthur, she said, man, that is a lot of theories you're kind of carrying around to try to unpack this. Why don't you think about creating one theory that could be used by other scholars who were interested in understanding the ways African people use technology. A theory that would acknowledge and recognize Africans' culture, Africans' diverse culture, and make that part of the theoretical framework. And I was like, sure, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> and so, it is on this premise that I advocate for this new theory, 
the African technocultural feminist theory. This theory considers that intersection of African culture and technology, which ultimately drives the ways African people use technology. It is rooted in gender equity and making sure that every member of the society is uplifted. African technoculture of feminist theory considers three pillars in the ways it unpacks this. It considers technology interface analysis, African culture, and gender equity. Technology interface calls for an unpacking of the specific platform that is studied. The scholar would need to explain the ways that platform allows the content creator to create content, as well as how that platform allows for user engagement. African culture calls for a hyper-specificity of the particular location within Africa that is studied. You would need to explicate the history, the cultural systems, as well as the ways members of the community interact with each other. And finally, the ways gender is negotiated within that community would be addressed as well. So, for example, assuming a scholar was interested in understanding the ways Unquo uses her Instagram to advocate against gender-based violence. So this particular post, um, she used, it was her fashion show, and she used her Instagram to share harrowing stories and experiences of women who were victims of gender-based violence and terrorist attacks in northern Nigeria. So the first step would be technology interface analysis so how, what affordance of Instagram allows her to share photos and text to share these stories? And then what other components of Instagram allows her to engage with her audience? The likes, the comments, etc. For African culture, there will be a need to unpack Northern Nigerian culture. What does that look like? What is the history of Northern Nigerian culture? What is the language? And how do community members interact with each other? And finally, because she's centering women who are underrepresented within Africa, it is already rooted in gender equity. And so I call on scholars who are interested in studying the ways African people are using technological platforms to use this theory. Now, this theory will ensure that African culture is recognized, is respected, and not erased. This is even more important because we know that a lot of these platforms are created in the West. So it's very easy to have culture erasure within these platforms. I look forward to a time when these theory is used and published within academic scholarship and is um, used in the classroom to teach upcoming scholars. I'm excited about when my children would watch Western media and see a more accurate and proper representation of themselves. Thank you.